session 105, and we finish with Genesis 39. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. So after uh, Potiphar's wife uh, lied about him and Potiphar had to take him to prison, um, it seems that Potiphar himself actually took him to prison. He, he didn't just send him because it says, and Joseph's, Joseph's master took him. And I think Potiphar knew um, what kind of man Joseph was. And maybe he didn't really believe that Joseph would have tried to rape his wife. He knew Joseph so much better. I mean, he gave his whole estate, his house, all his servants. Everybody was under Joseph's hand. Everything was given in Joseph's hand. He trusted Joseph, but um, he couldn't go against his wife. I mean, she accused Joseph of this. She had witnesses in the house. Um, she had his garment in her hand that, that um, he left when he fled away from her, remember? So he, he couldn't, in front of all his um, servants, tell um, his wife that maybe he didn't believe her. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, um, Potiphar could have killed or could have had Joseph killed, but he, he put him in prison. He, I don't think he wanted to kill him. I don't think he really believed that Joseph was such a bad man. So somewhere um, in Potiphar's heart, he, he knew that Joseph was innocent. Therefore, he didn't kill him. He just uh, locked him up in prison. But what's absolutely beautiful is uh, verse 21. But Yahuwah was with Joseph. So now he's in prison, and the Bible says, again, still, Yahuwah is with him. And now I take you back to the beginning of uh, chapter 39, where uh, Joseph was sold as a slave into Potiphar's house. And verse 2 says, and Yahuwah was with Joseph. Just like verse 21 says, Yahuwah was with Joseph. Yahuwah was with him in Potiphar's house as a slave, and he became the leader of the house. Yahuwah was with Joseph in prison, and uh, let's read verse 22. And the guardian of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatever they did there, it was Joseph's doing. And the guardian of the prison looked for nothing, but everything was under Joseph's authority, because Yahuwah was with him. And that which he did, Yahuwah made to prosper. Listen to this. Just like in, in, in Potiphar's house, Yahuwah was with Joseph in prison, and Joseph became the leader in prison. Just like um, verse 3 says, Potiphar um, gave everything in Joseph's hand. So, verse 22 says, and the prison guardian gave everything to Joseph's hand. And the prison guardian looked at nothing because everything was under Joseph. Um, where's that verse? Um, where Potiphar also looked at nothing. Oh, here we go. Verse 6. And Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew nothing what he had um, because Joseph was looking after everything. So because of Joseph's character and the way that he is handling himself, even in the difficult, terrible circumstances of being a slave, even in the terrible circumstances of being a prisoner, his character, his godly character is still making him that people trust him. They put everything in his hand. They know that God is with him. And God blesses his work that he does so that people give him even more work and he becomes, he becomes the head of everything that he does. He's the best servant and he becomes the leader of the servants. He's the best prisoner. He becomes the leader of the prisoners because Yahuwah was with him. And that's the same for your life. Wherever God may send you, even if it's in bad circumstances like in Joseph's life, learning to trust him. Not Everything can't always just be um, you know, roses and, uh, and honey and, and good times. We, we might have to... Um, start understanding that God's plans is much bigger than our plans and his thoughts is much higher than our thoughts so if things go bad for us like it did for Joseph we we cannot turn around and say God is no longer with us what would have happened to, to, to Joseph if, if he said well now I'm a slave so obviously God is no longer with me none of the prophecies would have come true none of the plans that God had 
to put a Hebrew person in charge of Egypt would have come to life. So none of the beautiful symbolism that he wanted to teach us by making Joseph a slave and then lifting him up again. And eventually all of Israel comes to Egypt and after um, a couple of hundred years they all became slaves, but God lifts them up out of slavery and takes them to the promised land. That's all symbolism for us. And none of this could have happened if Joseph decided, oh, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to trust God anymore because I don't think he's with me anymore. So we have to trust God through difficult circumstances. I mean, Joseph, um, he got it right. His faith made him endure for 20 years. And I just sometimes think how long will our faith make, make us endure. All right, now we jump to um, chapter 40. And you know, chapter 40 is all about, I'm not going to read all the verses. Um, it's all about Joseph being in prison and the, the butler and the baker of Pharaoh is thrown into prison because they did something wrong and he wasn't happy with them. And then they, they, they dreamed, the, the butler and the baker both dreamed. The butler dreamed there was a vine with three branches and he um, saw how the fruit uh, came onto the branches and he squeezed out the fruit and he served wine again to Pharaoh. Um, and the baker also uh, dreamed that there were three baskets with bread on his head and the birds came and, the, and they, they started picking and eating up the, the, the bread from the baskets on his head. And Joseph um, told them what the dreams meant because Yahuwah was with him and Yahuwah gave him the information, just like in Daniel's time. Both Joseph and Daniel confirmed that it's not them that can interpret the dreams. It is, it is their God that gives them the, the wisdom. But what's beautiful about Joseph is he's the leader in prison. And the one morning, um, verse, verse 6, <coughs> and Joseph came into them in the morning to check on them and see they were sad. And he asked the officers, Pharaoh's officers, the butler, the baker, um, why do you look so sad today? I mean, Joseph didn't have to stop and ask them how they are. He's basically in charge of all of them and they all of, the, all of them must just um, you know, do what he says. But again, this shows that this, the, the seed from the tree of life is inside Joseph, just like it was inside Abraham. Abraham also treated everybody with love and respect and with humanity. And this is what Joseph is doing. Um, he's asking them, how are you? What's wrong? Why are you so sad? How can I be of service to you? He didn't just walk past them and ignore them. So they, they explained to him um, their dreams and they didn't know what it meant. But um, Joseph said, that uh, he can interpret the dreams and he told the butler that within three days he will be reinstated as the uh, service provider of the wine to the pharaoh and then he asked the the butler <coughs> sorry he said to the butler please remember me um, when you are back in pharaoh's house um, remember me when it shall be well with you again and allow um, mercy to me and please make mention of me to Pharaoh and please help me to come out of prison. This is verse 14. But regrettably we know that uh, after three days uh, Joseph's interpretation of the dream did come true and the butler was taken back into Pharaoh's house, into Pharaoh's palace and he resumed his work there. But regrettably he didn't remember Joseph. He, he forgot about Joseph. Um, and um, and I think the main reason for that is also that, that God wanted to, to teach Joseph that you can't rely on any human beings. And again, take this through to your life. We cannot rely on any human beings to bring us out of a situation if it's part of God's plan. So Joseph had to learn that he can't sit and wait for the butler to tell Pharaoh what a wonderful man Joseph is. Because what if, what if the butler did that and he told Pharaoh and Pharaoh brought uh, Joseph out of prison? What would have happened to Joseph? He would have continued being a slave somewhere, isn't it? He wouldn't have risen to power. The only reason why 
he rose to power eventually when Pharaoh did take him out of prison was because Pharaoh had a dream. And then Joseph was the only person that could do what um, what had to be done in the land of Egypt. But if he came out of prison before that time, he wouldn't have been in the, in the position where he could have become the leader of, of Egypt. So God's plans, again, his, his timing is so much more clever than ours. Unfortunately for the baker, he wasn't so so lucky. Um, the the dream he had, where the birds were eating the bread from the third basket on top of his head, meant that he was going to die. He was going to be hanged, and the birds would eat his carcass. Ugh. But yeah, that's what happened in the old in the old times. So verse nineteen. Yet within three days, um, Pharaoh shall lift up your head from off of you. <laughs> So that's a nice way to say you'll be decapitated. And he shall hang your body on a tree. And the birds shall eat your flesh from off of you. So yeah, the baker unfortunately lost his life, but the butler went back to work. So verse 23 says, Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but he forgot him. So it's sad. But we know that God had a plan even behind that sad situation. Let's jump to chapter 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. Right, so after the butler and the baker was in prison, there was another two years that passed before um, the butler even remembered Joseph. So again, I'm not going to read everything. You, you guys know the story. We've learned about these stories from Sunday school. Um, but Pharaoh dreamed and he, he stood um, by the river. Now, the only river that's in Egypt is the Nile River. And the Nile River is also seen as a god. Um, they worship the Nile River. They worship the crocodiles. They made statues of crocodiles. They worship the frogs. Um, the Nile River gave them life. So to them, it was the the god of the water that's giving them life and they can plant their crops and whatever. So I love this whole idea how um, Pharaoh's dream is about the seven healthy cows that came out of the Nile River and then there were seven lean cows that came out of the Nile River and the lean cows devoured the healthy cows. So just to show that um, in, in their eyes the Nile River gives life um, but the Nile River can also give death. And by the time that Moses came to Egypt, he proved to them that the God of the Hebrews are above the God of the Nile River because the God of the Hebrews made the Nile River to become blood. And the God of the Hebrews made the frogs to come out of the Nile River and just overflow the land, proving again and again how the gods of Egypt is nothing compared to the God of the Hebrews. So Pharaoh dreamed um, another dream with thin, seven thin ears of, of corn, corn ears, uh, corn stalks. Thin um, stalks devoured the, the full stalks. And he didn't know what it meant, so he, he, he called all his uh, magicians and his occult um, uh, sorcerers and his uh, dream interpreters. And many times these people can interpret dreams. Remember, they also have power. Just like in Moses' time, when Moses threw down the staff and it became a snake, uh, Pharaoh's sorcerers could also throw down their staffs and, you know, it also became snakes. But this limited power, the, the occult, the, the dark, satanic, demonic kingdom of Lucifer only has limited power. We know in the book of Revelation and, and all through the Bible, it says that um, the enemy will deceive the whole world with lying signs and wonders. So they, there is power in the occult. And that's why God's Torah tells us that we should have nothing to do with um, uh, soothsayers and, um, and witches and those kind of things because there is power in them and sometimes they can convince you even that they are speaking the truth and you must follow them. In the Torah itself, it even says that God will sometimes test his people by sending false prophets when they say things and it comes to pass, it will actually happen as they say, but people shouldn't follow them because they, they, they lead people away from obedience to God. And then God says in the Torah, 
if you follow people whose predictions come true, but they lead you away from my Torah, then you know that they are false prophets. First of all, don't follow them. Secondly, I'm testing you also to see if you're just going to walk behind anybody and listen and eat up everything they say, um, not discerning um, the truth from the lie, because deception seems like truth. And people can sometimes um, do things to make you think that they are true prophets of God. But the moment they, they lead you away from God, from his law, the Bible says, stone those prophets. You know, get them out of your life. We can't stone today anymore, but in biblical times, the the Torah justice was in place and if two or three witnesses came and they came in front of the the court system then those people had to be stoned because they brought in deception in the camp and they they tried to lead people away from God so we, we can't follow every Tom Dick and Harry that gives predictions or that looks like they are talking the truth if they lead you away from Torah and that's why here um, although the magicians of Pharaoh also had power and they also received information from the occult, um, he didn't allow them to to give Pharaoh a, a satisfactory um, uh, interpretation of his dreams. Maybe they they told Pharaoh all kinds of stories, trying to to sound clever. But Pharaoh knew that those interpretations weren't true, and he continued looking for somebody that can interpret the dreams for him. So the butler came forward and he told Pharaoh that when he was in prison, verse 12 of uh, chapter 41, there was with us in prison a young man. First of all, young men were basically not very significant. Um, It's older, older people are more wise and older people are more trusted. So, but yeah, Joseph was a young man. So it's already again proving that, that God's kingdom doesn't work like the world's kingdom. In the world, you must be old, you must have experience, you must be trusted, you must have wisdom. But yeah, Pharaoh is being told about a young man in prison. I mean, first of all, he's in prison. Why is he in prison? Who's this guy? Oh, it's Joseph. Oh, he tried to rape Potiphar's wife years ago. He's just a Hebrew slave. He's nobody. He's nothing. But yet, this Hebrew young nobody became the leader of Egypt. That's just how God works. Can you see, looking beyond this worldly system, see how amazing God works, even through so-called insignificant uh, people that he puts in place. He, He puts them through prison so that they can learn to trust him, so that he can lift them up when the time is right. So the butler says, there was a young man in prison with me, and Ivrit. Now I've taught you guys before, Ivrit means Hebrew in the language Hebrew. <laughs> and remember, um, Abraham was called an Ivrit. Why? Because he crossed over. That makes him a Hebrew. And we also cross over out of Babylon, out of Egypt, and we become Ivrits. We, we become like Joseph, a Hebrew. We cross over. But yeah, in Egypt's eyes, the Hebrews weren't really significant people. So again, he's a young man and he's a Hebrew. And besides that, the butler says, he was the slave, the servant of the captain of the guard. So besides that he's a young man, besides that he's a Hebrew, he's he's just a servant. He's just working under the captain guard in prison. So who is this now? If, if all my magicians can't even tell me the meaning of my dream, how can this um, insignificant young Hebrew servant tell me anything? But the butler convinced Pharaoh, um, and so Pharaoh brought uh, Joseph out of prison. Um, yeah, and it's, it's funny for me, um, because we, it, it tells that... Um, Joseph had to go wash himself and he he shaved um, his beard. He probably had a very long beard and all those things. Oh, here we go. Verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved himself. So he made himself look a little bit more presentable and he changed his clothing. Yes, his clothing was dirty and old and, and uh, filthy. So... They gave him fresh clothes and he came into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've dreamed a dream and there's nobody that can interpret it for me. And I've heard that it's said of you 
that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Beautiful. Listen to Joseph's answer, just like Daniel's answer when we read the book of Daniel. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not me. It is not in, in me. It is indeed the Elohim, my Elohim, that will give Pharaoh an answer. So uh, Pharaoh told um, Joseph his dream. Um, let me continue down. So Joseph answers Pharaoh's dream. So he told him about the cows and the corn. And then Joseph said in verse 25, The dreams of Pharaoh are echad. Um, they are the same. They are one. They are united. Your dream about the cows and your dream about the corns of um, the ears of corn. Elohim has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Understand. Understand the significance. It is so very, very similar to when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of, the, of that statue with a golden head, remember, and the ten toes. And Daniel also said, Elohim is showing you, King Nebuchadnezzar, what he is about to do. It's just amazing. Because God is the one that is about to bring prosperity for seven years to Egypt under the hand of Joseph. But then God is the one that will bring seven years of famine so that Joseph's family can survive and come to Egypt and survive the famine. Um, but it's all in God's hand. It's not just um, many people can say, oh, it's natural circumstances. There was just seven years of famine. It's one of, one of those things. No, this dream was given to Pharaoh before it happened, predicting that it is going to happen, proving that God is in charge. So um, Joseph interpreted the dream and basically told Pharaoh that for seven years there will be plenty in the land of Egypt and then after the seven years it will be um, famine. And so Joseph is the young man chosen by Yahuwah to interpret the big and mighty Pharaoh's dreams. And uh, we'll continue tomorrow. <laughs>